we spoke to the group CEO of AMREF Health Africa, Dr. Gitahi, who pointed out the glaring gaps in the healthcare systems and the state of UHC in the continent. The pandemic um, itself, uh, across the continent of Africa where we work, has seen both positive and negative impact on the health system. For one, it has seen on, on, the, on, a, on, a, on a negative side, it has actually seen lower access to services. We've seen women and girls uh, seek less and less services because of the fear of health facilities and maybe the fear of getting infected. And this is going to have a, a negative trip, you know, um, uh, effect on the health system because we are probably going to see increasing teenage pregnancies, increasing maternal mortality. And we are also going to see that preventable diseases that have relied on adequate immunization programs in the countries. And these have been disrupted by the pandemic because either health workers were distracted or people did not take their children for immunization. We are going to, and this obviously is going to affect negatively uh, our achievements on uh, access to uh, health services. We're going to see more people um, seek and we are going to also see increasing mortality as well. We saw that at the beginning of the pandemic, we had very few uh, ICU beds or intensive care beds or high dependency unit beds. We saw very little access to oxygen, which is a key commodity, not only for COVID, but it's a key commodity for other conditions like pneumonia for children and others. And we've seen that ramped up We've seen increased capacity for laboratory access. Uh, as we build capacity for diagnosis of COVID, there was a lot of training of uh, laboratory technicians, uh, building physical infrastructure for laboratories, which wasn't there before. So all these are positive and they're going to remain in the health system for long and will definitely play a positive role in the achievement of UHC. Universal health coverage is all about financial protection to access to health services. Mm -hmm. Now, financial protection requires more investment by government into health financing. And this increased um, financing for health needs to come from tax collection. We've seen governments get into economic recession. And what we are worried about, what is going to be the impact of this reduced yes. economic growth and indeed economic recession on the available money to invest into health? So governments are best advised that even in in a recession, do not deprioritize health, actually increase health investment so that you can protect your economy now and in the future. What would you consider is the state of universal healthcare right now in Africa? Are there any countries that are getting closer to the goal? And if so, what are they doing differently? It's a mixed picture, I must say, that we have countries that trailblazers that have started efforts of course, if you had to look at Africa, we tend to look at North Africa as a very different construct from Sub-Saharan Africa. In Sub-Saharan Africa, we have seen countries like Ghana, Kenya, Senegal, um, uh, South Africa, take clear critical steps to achieving universal health coverage. These steps include one, legislation of universal health coverage to ensure that it is embedded in law. Secondly, political will, declarations at the highest political level to say that it is a strategic country goal, social economic goal. Third, ensuring that there is a process of pooling resources. We are going to actually be releasing a report of the AHI Commission on the State of UHC in Africa, which is also going to go beyond just the counting the numbers to community voices to actually hearing more stories from the people who are actually supposed to be beneficiaries of UHC and making accountability not just quantitative, but qualitative as well.